In the philosophy of India, the world that we see around us is considered to be mithya or an illusion. Since ancient times, the purpose of the Indian artist was to give us a glimpse of that which is more important, the life of the spirit, the life within. The art of India presented a view of the underlying harmony of all of creation and took us always away from the concerns of the material world. India was a great trading nation, famed far and wide and had a rich cosmopolitan culture. Indian artists assimilated the different influences which came over the ages from China, Greece. They wanted to Nandlal Bose, Asit Haldar and Samarendra Gupta. For painters who up till then had not known of the existence of a highly developed tradition of painting in India, this journey to Ajanta was an exhilarating experience. The Bengal school, headed by Abhinindranath Tagore, tried to formulate a new national aesthetic, which was based upon the styles of ancient and medieval Indian paintings. This was a complete change from the Western academic style of painting which was being taught in art schools. In 1902, the great poet Rabindranath Tagore established the Vishwa Bharati University at Shantiniketan near Calcutta. He disagreed with the direction that the nationalist art movement was taking in copying the styles of the past. In his vision, true modernity in art was to be rooted in the living spirit of the people and the times. In 1919, he invited the artist Nandlal Bose to head the Kalabhavan, an art institution which he set up in Shantiniketan. I think that does signal a major shift within the modern art movement where Indian art moves away from its ancient classical sources or purely away from its medieval courtly traditions and begins to look at art at a more everyday level. So this is the living tradition around them. By the time we come to the 20s, I think there's less talk about transcendentalism and idealism and more talk about invigorating Indian art, bringing it, you know, the spirit of living India and the living India was really village India which they discovered around them. Shanti Niketan and Rabindranath's vision laid the foundations for some of the finest endeavors to find a true artistic expression in the midst of the changing times. Artists who studied and taught at Shanti Niketan constantly broke new ground, attempting to devise an expression that drew inspiration from the ancient traditions of India without copying them. This was an exciting period in Indian art and indeed in Indian history. Indian artists were rejecting the yoke of the West and attempting to rediscover their own roots. They wished to forge a new modern identity based upon these roots. John Leroy's importance um, is pivotal in the sense of he was probably one of the first modern Indian artists who decided to go back to the folk and tribal traditions of Indian art. Um, use the colour and the line use of let's say the Kali Ghats or um, even the folk traditions to evolve an idiom totally his own. And this was best represented by eventually his work of the 1940s in which he took even a theme so alien as study of the Bible or um, themes based on Christianity 
to which he did not feel a national um, a natural emotional empathy but he realized that if his style could um, represent themes of such nature he had truly developed a new style Amrita Shergill was born in 1913 to a Hungarian mother and sick father she trained at the Ecole des Beaux-Arts in Paris and returned to India in 1934 in search of her roots. On her return to India, she attempted to integrate the two manners of perception and aesthetics which she had inherited. Amrita travelled extensively in India and rediscovered the rich legacy of India's ancient and medieval artistic traditions. And Ajanta is part of her itinerary. When she goes, visits them. She visits the South Indian temples, the mural paintings. And if for her, it's a whole new rediscovery. She's coming out of an academic training and a modernist background. And she's out to rediscover a new Indian lineage. And Ajanta to her becomes also the symbol of the grandeur and the greatness of India's artistic past as against what she considered the mediocrity of the present. From the 1920s, new strands began to appear in the tapestry of Indian art. Against the backdrop of India's ancient artistic legacy and the changing times, the Indian artist attempted to evolve his personal vision. A new national cultural identity was being forged. One that was not based on the slavish imitation of past traditions, nor on Western norms, but one which derived sustenance and inspiration from a great legacy and looked forward dynamically into the future.